My name is Hayden Bowles. I'm a 22 year old business owner and investor. And over the past six years, I've been running a couple of different companies, taking distributions out of there to go buy real estate with. It's been a wild journey. I've also been one of the largest e-commerce based YouTube channels where we also talk about personal finance in real estate. So make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell because I post a ton of cool stuff here. So if you want to hear more about my journey and what I've done, you can go ahead and watch this video. I'll leave it linked down below. That's talking about how I went from zero to $7 million by 22, showing you everything in the middle, including all the financials. So three years ago, I started buying rental properties. I didn't really know what I was looking for. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to look for. And over the last year and a half, I've really put my foot on the gas and started ramping it up, buying property after property. I've invested six figures multiple times into other people's real estate deals. And currently I'm purchasing a 48 unit apartment complex for $3.6 million underneath my real estate fund, Bulls Capital. This is the first piece of property where I'm raising money from accredited investors. And it's been a really fun process so far. I'm excited to close on this one. So I'm going to show you the whole portfolio, show you how I spend less than 20 minutes a month managing it. It's fully automated. Then I'm going to jump on a plane and fly a few thousand miles away to show you in person this 48 unit property that I'm purchasing just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. And if you're an accredited investor, you can click the link down below. I'll leave it there to the deal room for this project because there's still a few more LP positions where if you want to partner up with us, you can. So like I said, I've mostly been inside of the e-commerce industry over the last many years. And you might say, well, how did you start buying properties at 19 years old? How'd you get the loan? Well, I had two years of self-employed tax returns from when I was 17 and 18 years old. Again, if you want to see all the finances and how much I was making, you can check out that other video linked below. And so for me, all I needed was those two years of tax returns. I needed a good credit score and then I needed liquidity, which I had, which shows that you can afford to buy the property. So at the end of 2019, I bought $780,000 worth of real estate. That looked like this single family home that was $405,000 in one of the best neighborhoods in my area. And then this trashy little duplex that has cash flowed incredibly well. I picked up that duplex for 375,000 and I actually sold it this year for 563,000 to a cash buyer. Now, just to show you the rent growth in my area in Arizona, that single family home that you see here, I was renting it for $2,300. It took a month and a half to find somebody. Nowadays, you could list that for $3,000 a month and it would be filled within two days. How do I know that? I just did it a month ago. Just a few weeks later, at the beginning of 2020, right before the virus went absolutely crazy, I bought another house for $390,000. It was a new construction, five bedroom, four bathroom, gorgeous home. Again, same story, it rented for about $2,300, nowadays over $3,000 a month easily. And then right as the virus was hidden and everybody was uncertain about what investments to make and if they should buy or sell a house, I ended up stealing a house for $890,000. Now you might say, how do you steal a house for almost a million? It was a really good deal. This property, is sitting on over an acre. It has 26 fruit trees in the backyard, over 6,000 square feet. It's a literal resort. It was my dream home. I bought it. I lived there for a while and then I ended up renting that house out. Today, that house is worth well over $1.6 million and it's currently rented for $78,000 a year, which might sound like a lot. However, that is actually drastically below the current market rents for that property. And as time went on, I just started picking up more and more properties. I got a four unit, then a six unit, then another four unit, and then a multifamily property with a friend. He just needed extra money to close. Close. So we did what's called a JV deal, which is basically just a 50-50 partnership. Then I invested six figures with a few other people into a 463 acre private island that's absolutely gorgeous. We're currently building 40 tiny homes on there. It's a really cool project. So as you can see, over two and a half to three years, all this stuff has just started to add up and it's accelerated over time. It's just that exponential growth curve. So if you take the market value of all those current properties plus that 48 unit that I'm buying, that's going to put me right at about that $10 million mark in my portfolio. Now, to be fair, the $3.6 million property is the first one I'm not buying with my own money, right? I'm raising money. I'm going to be an investor as well, but I am raising $1.4 million from investors so that we can start doing this bigger, faster, and just more frequently. And the reason I'm super comfortable doing that is because I've taken the last year and a half to really learn this game and meet a lot of the right people. In fact, one of my good friends, Tim Bratz, who owns over $400 million worth of real estate, over 4,000 apartments, he's actually a partner on this 48 unit property that I'm doing. He's signing in his name as well. So he's financially responsible, legally responsible, and he's bringing money to the table as an investor as well. So we just have a really kick-ass team. And that's why I know that this is going to go really well because I already know the property is great, but I've just never raised money. And that's a whole new thing to learn. And over time, I've spent six figures investing back into my properties in Arizona, renovating them, making sure that we can capture the maximum upside rent. Some of the units were in terrible condition. So we had to go in there, gut it all out, renovate it. But now we're able to raise the rents from seven or $800 a month to about 
1400 which is where the market is. So I'm adding a lot of value to these buildings by increasing the income, and then I get really, really stable cash flow for a long period of time. Now, on the 48 unit that I'm purchasing, there's not quite as much heavy lifting we have to do, but there's still some stuff we have to improve. So let's jump on a plane and go check it out. Now the other larger expense we're gonna have and something that we actually legally need to do is the balconies. So not only is a lot of the wood rotten and some of these are sagging slightly, only a few, but these railings are actually not the required height. They're really short. Let me give you a look. The railings are actually only 31 and a half inches tall and the required minimum is 34. Most people opt for 36 inches. I'm tall, I'm 6'2". I don't even necessarily feel safe out on some of the higher floors on the balcony. Not only because it's way too short, you could easily tumble over it, which then we'd be financially liable for. And as you can see, all of these railings are not exactly the most sturdy. So it really actually doesn't feel too safe on the upper levels. And of course, they're not all like that, but when you replace one and now it looks very different, we're probably gonna use Trex as the material because you really only have to do it once, even though it's a little more expensive up front. Um, you kind of got to slowly start doing all of them. So it would be a decent expense, a nice capital improvement. It would look better, last a lot longer, and uh, of course, remove the liability and safety issue. All right, and that wraps up day one of the inspection. It was very interesting. Most tenants were extremely polite. There's always a couple crazy people, but everything was super smooth. It went really well. Overall, very impressed with the building, the condition, a couple little things. There's always little things. So um, I'll give you a couple clips here along the inside, but some small stuff, individually metered for the electric. We got some plan to clean up the utility expenses um, there's a couple other operational expenses we can clean up and then other than that just start bumping the income so laundry could use a little improvement there's four total extra very large rooms that are above the laundry same size as those rooms and that could easily be rented out as storage so doing a couple other small things like that but uh, really good property overall this unit was the ex crackhead unit that finally got out the only one really crazy unit oh my gosh it smells so bad oh Take a look. This is the renovated unit. <laughs> I mean, the unit's nice, but they messed up the flooring. Put like white tape along the baseboards after they already messed it up. I mean, you casually have lighter fluid inside of a cooler. While that crazy unit that smells disgusting looks super aggressive, it's actually not that difficult to deal with. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. A door hinge, some flooring, definitely new paint, some new little siding trim and baseboards and get rid of the smell, clean it up. I mean, it's not, it always looks crazy. People are like, oh my gosh, like that's, you don't want to deal with that. That's real estate. Like you shouldn't buy real estate. It's like, that's not a big deal. You can send someone in there and fix all of that for a couple thousand dollars. It's, it's not, you know, if that's the worst, I'm totally happy. So now that you've seen the property and you get a sense of what it looks like, let's go through the numbers. Like I mentioned, the general partners on this deal, absolute kick-ass team. I'm very excited for that. This is what the property looks like, as you just already saw. This is what the interior of a renovated unit looks like. Almost all of these, 46 out of the 48, are great with stainless steel appliances, new kitchen, new flooring, new bathrooms, cabinets, paint, all that stuff. So it is good to go. Let's jump in and take a deeper look. The purchase price was agreed to $3.6 million. However, after due diligence, there's usually always something wrong with the property or something you didn't expect, and you're able to negotiate what's called a credit. This takes place in any real estate transaction, whether it's a single family house or a big building. We ended up getting a $90,000 credit towards the purchase price. So the purchase price will actually only be $3.51 million. That's great, just extra money for us to go renovate these units. So 48 units, it's a good split between one and two bedroom units. Average rents are $700. We got all the rent rolls right here, very specific. I'm assuming the current loan, 2.39 million at a 3.69% rate. That is extremely high quality debt and it's still on interest only. So. I wanna run through some of the numbers on this property. The rents are really low, $700 on average for a beautiful renovated unit right across the street from the lake, that's cheap. So the number that really matters here, and this is what I'm conveying to all of our investors, if we can just increase the average rent by $125 a month across the board, we win. We hit our numbers. We'll cash flow where we need to be, and we will have raised the value of the building. Because remember, the only number that derives the value of the building is the NOI, the net 
operating income. That is the value of the building. That's how it is based on a cap rate. So the NOI is your free cash flow if you were to buy the property in cash. Now, when you finance a property, which most people do, you're going to have your debt payment on top of that. And that is what will give you the return that you're going to get. So for an example, the as is financials, this is the exact presentation that I'm showing all our investors so they can understand the numbers. Current gross rents, $32,000 a month. We're going to have management expenses, maintenance expenses. We're budgeting for vacancies, of course. You got insurance, you got property taxes, you got utilities. All this stuff is not inexpensive, right? It, it costs money. The NOI on this property as it sits is just over $16,000 a month. Now, we have an interest-only debt payment right now of $7,451. So you have to remove that from it. That brings our net cash flow to $8,000 a month, so almost $100,000 a year. Based on the $1.4 million we're raising, that's a return of about 7% cash on cash. And I don't really know why I'm doing the air quotes, but like that's the term that's thrown around. So if you don't know what that means, that is your return based on the amount of money you're putting in. You make 8% a year with all the money that we invested as it sits before we raise any rents. Now, as we do our value add plan, which is gonna include over time the 32 exterior decks, right? The bottom uh, row right here does not have decks because it's half submerged underground. We're going to have to go through and replace those. We're considering adding electric baseboard heaters for about $2,500 a unit. That would lower our gas bill by $12,000. Here's what happens to a 6% cap rate when you reduce the expenses by $12,000. You take $12,000 and you divide that by 0 0.06. You just added $200,000 of value to the building just by doing that. And so similarly, you take $125 a month in rent times the 48 units. It's an extra $6,000 a month times that by 12 you are adding $72,000 a year of income to this property, which divide that by a six cap, we're at about a five and a half, six, you're adding $1.2 million in value to the building just by doing the rent raise alone. So as you can see, it can make a huge difference in your amount of equity and you can really increase the value of the building pretty quickly when you can raise rents or improve your operational expenses. So again, this property will be purchased for about 3.5. I'd like to get that value to closer to 5 million. I think that's where we'll be in the next four to seven years. Now we will complete the last two units of renovation. That's not that big of a deal. Some exterior siding around the windows. There's 16 of these panels right here that you see next to the windows. Those are just need touch-ups over time. That's not that expensive at all. Laundry room improvements. We're going to have a third party company come in. They put in brand new machines. They pay for it. We do a revenue split. We don't have to manage it. We don't have to worry about it. They do all maintenance. It's really good. Now you might say, well, these numbers are good. You're making 7%. It's a conservative investment, right? It's You're going to raise the value of the building, but that's not what our numbers will be. That's just what they are on the acquisition. So these are the stabilized financials, which we will hit early 2024. That's right as the interest only period is up and our debt payment is going to increase by $3,500 a month month, which is principal pay down. Okay. So I just want to make that, that difference there. When your debt payment goes up like that, it's not just an added expense because you're still paying down your mortgage balance. And that, that equates to a 3% return internally for our return. Okay. So we'd like to get the total gross rents to a minimum of about $38,000 a month. We're still going to have all these expenses. Some of the ones associated with a percentage, they're going to change, right? You have to budget based on the percentage of gross income. Our property management, they get 8%. So they are directly incentivized to collect more money because then they get more money. Pretty simple. Everybody's on the same team, rowing in the same boat. The NOI that we are projecting to hit, this is our minimum number, is to be closer to $21,000, specifically $20,700. Now again, our debt payment is raised from 7,500-ish to about $11,000. Again, that's still part of our return. So we're gonna have a larger expense ratio, but our cash flow is still higher than it is on acquisition. We'll be closer to 9,000 a month, which brings us to about 107,000 a year. That's a 7.5% cash on cash. So what'll really happen, it'll creep its way on up towards 10%, and then it'll pull back when that debt payment increases, which is just paying down the mortgage balance. Now, all of these numbers are extremely conservative. This is assuming we're not doing anything to reduce the utilities. This is assuming we can only raise the rents by $125 a month average, which is again, our minimum conservative number that we are extremely confident we can do. And personally, I'm setting this up so that I can outperform the returns that we're projecting for all the investors. So this would bring the project total to between that six to 9% cash on cash mark and a very consistent 14 to 17% internal rate of return. If I can speak freely, I think we'll creep up north of about 10% on the cash on cash. And I think we'll creep up towards about 20% with the internal rate of return.
So I hope that gave you a little bit of a sense of what I look for in terms of the numbers because you're gonna have to read documents like this and be able to do your underwriting on the property and you're gonna have to look through all the financials. For an example, last week I made offers on about $16 million worth of real estate that we're also looking to purchase underneath Bulls Capital. We're always looking for a good deal. But you have to go deep into the financials and be able to create a number for, hey, I'm willing to pay this, I'm gonna start a little bit lower but we'll go up to here and then you have to study the market, you have to know what the rents are, what the population growth, what the job growth, you got to know the market and the property, two separate pieces of underwriting, overlay those on top of each other and figure out what can we pay, what's it going to be worth, what are the rents right now, and what can they be. So it is no easy task by any means. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand hours into this project already. It's been very time intensive. However, that's what you have to do, especially when you're learning a new market. You have to put in the time because you're making an investment. Whether it's my own money, I, I treat it the same, versus investor money, you have to make sure you're going to get the return that you're projecting. And again, this is open to accredited investors. So if that's you, hit the deal room link down below. You can sign up there, see our portal, see the video that walks through this, download this document along with the rent rolls and some other financials. But you're also going to then get on our list and see all the other properties that we're doing over time, even if this one isn't the right fit. So that'll be really fun. We have a lot of stuff going on underneath Bulls Capital. I'm super excited for the projects we have coming up, as well as the team members we've brought on. I mean, we are partnering with some amazing, amazing investors who have a ton of experience, and that makes me really excited for what's to come. So I hope you enjoyed this video going from zero to 10 million or so on the real estate portfolio side of things in under three years. And I'd really like to be at that next threshold of 100 million in the next three years, primarily through doing bigger projects underneath the real estate fund, Bulls Capital. I have no doubt we'll get there. I'm excited to partner with a lot of great investors so that we can keep doing more of this underneath Bulls Capital. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.